box where you can type the file name you're looking for, mm -hmm. it stopped at C's. So I hit D, and all the file names that start with D showed up. I hit E, all the E files show up. So they, they're there, it's just not displaying them right away. So while I was doing this, I, I did a few letters, and all of a sudden, the file showed up. Everything else showed up. All of them. Files. Huh? Oh, so all files. So then, all yeah, after I tried a few things, so, you know, in the file, I, I hit D, X, Y, and it's all, it's all there. So close it. I go open up to file, open, do it again. Same thing. I stopped the C's. I said, well, that's strange. I said, let's just let it sit here for a second. I wanted to see if it's because I hit those keys or if it just took a while to display. So I let it sit there for about two minutes. After two minutes, it all popped up. I said, okay. So there's just a two-minute delay in displaying all the files. It's only in the Office Suite. Well, yes. That's all we had installed. We Office, uh, Word, Excel, okay. Project, Publisher, did them all. Um, but Windows Explorer worked fine. You open up, you can browse to them, you see them all right away. Now, where I was going with that, it could be the antivirus doing a scan, but if you open up an explorer and they're all there, then obviously that's not the case. Yeah. And it was strange that I could hit G, H, and the, those files that start with G would show up right away. So I let it sit. So I closed it, opened back up again, and I, I looked at the file where it stopped. It was a C, it was a PDF file. So I closed that. Go to Windows Explorer, find that file, and the one below it, the next file, is a shortcut to something. I, I can see it's a shortcut file. It says, it says Corey Home or something. Okay. I, click on, I click on that, it locks up. So he's got a bad link somewhere because it locked up for about two minutes, and then it came back and said it cannot be displayed or something like that. The problem is, okay, so now we found another problem. When you're doing file open, it's trying to resolve the shortcut to some uh, other, other place. Okay. So I'm like, okay, well, that's strange because he had Windows XP before with the same My Document folder. Windows XP didn't mind this file being here. No, no big deal. So Windows 7 is a little smarter. It's trying to dig down in there and index it for you, I guess. So you go to Windows Explorer. If you right-click on it and try to go delete, it locks up. You can't even delete it. So, of course, command prompt, I can delete it. Sure. So once I delete that command prompt, uh, once I delete that file through command prompt, um, you go to file open and it works fine. Thank you. Um, so that was interesting. I just got delivery. Yeah, for, for those that are listening to the MP3, Matt Rainey just got delivered his Kindle Fire live on the show. <laughs> so if you're, if you're watching it live, you just witnessed a wonderful the moment in Matt. Well, we'll see. I have, this is a review unit that I had to buy. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, yeah, they don't send me stuff for free. Oops, opened it upside down. Okay, so that was it. Uh, a bad link, which was interesting. Um, because I had never had a problem before. Right, and XP, and then... The Windows and 7, that's... like you stated, is probably trying to resolve all the shortcuts for it. It's in that scene or something right. to that effect. We don't we don't know for sure, but once you delete the shortcut from the command prompt, the good old command prompt, you're good to go. All was fine after that. All right. Hey, look at this. So I got a kill of fire here. But you want to see what happens? Yeah. Let's see. Hold on. Okay. It's not packaged as nice as an iPad, I can tell you that. It's just in a plain box. There's no there's no Amazon stickers in here either. <laughs> My kids like the Apple stickers. Gotcha. All right, but you know what? I, right off the bat, I like the size of this thing. Seven inches, I like it. It's a nice size to hold in one hand. It's kind of, it's heavier than it looks, too. Let's see. Opening the shrink wrap. Again, it's not packaged as nice as an iPad. 
There goes that. And sorry for the people who are listening, but um, I have to open this right now because I've been waiting for it. I did pre-order this. I pre-ordered this before the press conference announcing it was even over. Let's see. I, I think that's the power button. Ah, oh, Kindle Fire. Can you I see that? that. Uh, you want to move it a little bit to your right a little bit more? There we go. My right. Yeah. I can't. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. All right. So it just says Kindle Fire. I'm not sure what it's supposed to do. It just says Kindle Fire. <laughs> I'm sold. I'll take 10, please. Okay. So um, it comes up with a desktop looking like a bunch of, I guess that's calligraphy pens and tomorrow's date. So it's tomorrow's already November 17th. Sweet. At 2.09. I hope it's not November 17th, because that's tomorrow, which is my daughter's birthday. Oh. Um, oh, look, you slide the whole arrow over. Okay, so I slide the arrow over, and it's already, I think, registered to me. I can pick my Wi-Fi hotspot, and you know what? I don't think I know my Wi-Fi hotspot password. How do you like that? About if you show that camera one more time, I'll, I'll put you on full screen, show them that Kindle device you got there. All right, let me, I think this is my Wi-Fi password. All right, what's it doing? Let me see here. Ah, okay. I guessed right. I guessed Central right. Central time. Okay. It recognized me. Hello, Matthew Rainey. That's nice. Okay, so now it's going through some kind of update, I guess. Latest Kindle software is being downloaded. So right away, it's got an update. And it wants me to connect the power. So I will not connect the power because it's not convenient for me. <laughs> How about that, Amazon? All right, so we're going to let that go. All and, right, um, cool. We'll, we'll go with some emails now. All right. Um, the summaries are kind of long, but bear with me as I read them. Um, I'm not going by any order here whatsoever. I'm just going to read them. First one is from Dante. He says, hi there, Matt. Business question for you. And the topic is dedicated internet really better if slower. Um, should I read the whole email or just summarize it? Uh, we can we can we can uh, summarize that. So um, here I'll read the first paragraph. I have a business client with an office of ten to fifteen computer systems who is currently using AT and T, UVerse High Speed Internet <laughs> Business Edition as his ISP. He's on the Max Turbo package, which gives him up to twenty four megs down and three megs up. My client is considering switching to TDS Metrocom, which is offering them a dedicated private internet connection of speeds of three megs down and three megs up for 150, which is more than what they're paying for AT&T. His question is, um, he he's questioning if the dedicated ISP or the service is better than shared and Matt, what are your thoughts on, on that before I chime in? Well, okay. So they're selling me get three three megs up and three megs down. Right for one fifty, and he he currently is with, is with AT and T, I guess twenty four down and three meg up at one fifteen, one hundred and fifteen dollars. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay. So the places that I've dealt with that have these um, dedicated private circuits, I don't find them nearly as fast as one of these so-called shared connections. Um, I, I, if you if you do a speed test just different times of the day, you're going to get way more than three. And I know that the salespeople like to say, no, you're dedicated three. This three is all yours. But it's still only three. I, I, don't, I don't like it. I, the clients I have, I, I've had clients that went from the same situation. They went from one that was shared, 
that the sales coach said, yeah, but it's shared. You can have slow connections to a dedicated line. And when they went to dedicated line, they complained how slow it was. Oh, and I have to agree. But I think one key feature about the dedicated line is the SLA, which is the service level agreement, which they do guarantee a couple of things. Speed might not be faster, but it's yours. Um, they also guarantee uptime, and if you go down, they guarantee how soon they can repair that circuit. And also, I've been part of networks before where the ISP, Time Warner, caught me up. You know, there's a problem with your router, it's broadcasting, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I guess there are advantages to having a dedicated circuit. Now, you are right. Speed, like 3 megs down and 3 megs up, not very fast, even if it's dedicated or not. But I guess this will all depend on the area that you live in and how much bandwidth that you're sharing. I mean, back in Chicago, where I'm originally from, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, it's slow. Kids are home, you know, they're on, you know, doing whatever online. And But if you if I go online at 9 p.m., it's blazing fast. So I think the SLA is where the dedicated... The benefit by having a dedicated, and also if you have VPNs across multiple sites, or if you're doing other business type needs, and um, maybe dedicated is the way to go. But that 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 can be an important factor as far as the reliability of your circuit. Mm -hmm. So if, yeah, if you're on a, if you're on a, if whatever you're on ATT U version, if it's going down a lot, definitely you're going to have a, a with a dedicated circuit. The uptime is going to be better. So that 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 could be an issue. But uh, if you're looking at the speed, the speed, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it's worth switching for speed. But it's, if you're happy with ATT U-verse, I would, I would keep it. I don't think you're going to get a speed increase by going to the 3 meg dedicated circuit. I agree. If, if there's not anything wrong with the ISP now, then why change it? But that's just my opinion, so. Of course, it is ATT. I don't know how their I don't know how their service is for ATT Uverse, but save it. Yeah, man. I mean, again, it already depends on the area and that you're in. I mean, if you're in a densely populated area and you're sharing that bandwidth, you know, maybe having a dedicated the T1 or, or you know whatever case may be is better. I guess it all depends, but I think the big the difference there is just the SLA. Got an email from. Pape, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. Hey, man, you guys are doing a great job. I learned a lot from this show more than while I was at school. Wow. Thank you very much. What is the easiest way to know your mail server name? Now, I'm not sure if he means if uh, you're a change server on your network or from the outside. Matt? Yeah, I'm not exactly sure, but uh, it depends. Okay, so two scenarios, your hosting your own mail with exchange server or some other mail server or someone's hosting it for you. Right. Uh, if you're hosting it yourself, um, I would think you would know what it is because you're hosting it. <laughs> but um, it, if it's somebody else, ATT, Uverse, Cox, um, Comcast, whatever it is, uh, I use, if I want to find out what incoming I'll go mail server is, I use Google. There you go. I think that you can do it from NS lookup. I think there's a type dash MX that rings a bell. I could I could be wrong. Um I use well, I I, I use NS lookup a lot. Um so of course you go to command prompt, you type in NS lookup, uh, you can do set q equals or set space q equals mx okay. and then type in the domain name. Um and that'll give you the MX records for which may or may not be the mail server you need for your mail client, though. True. Because they may be pointed to some kind of spam filtering service or something else, and that's not really who you're going to connect to. And if you are Outlook, I, I think you can go to the properties, depending which version you have of your account, and there should be a f field there that says Mail Exchange Server, and I'll probably clear that name, too. There, there probably are other ways, but just off the top of my head, that's what comes to mind. But I, I use Google. I mean, I get clients calling. I mean, in most of these places, if they're if somebody's hosting your mail for you, they make it pretty easy to find what the mail server settings are. Yeah. 
So, Isaac, you should go. Cool. This email is from Mr. John Campbell. Matt, 